So in the last set of slides, I will actually discuss some of the research we do in my group in the area of genomics and proteomics, and how we can um, do some analytics which tells us a little bit about the, this field. So first, we have a slide from Microsoft, which shows how Azure is used to run BLAST. BLAST is a hugely important program, brilliantly invented at NIH and exploited by NIH. It um, allows you to take a given sequence or a given set of sequences and compare it with a huge database of other sequences to find out um, not only what sequence matches with what other sequences, and also how they're aligned. So how that matches so that you can uh, um, join sequences together through this process. And here's an example where um, we have actually an Excel front end, and then a back end that um, runs as a blast on a cloud, the Microsoft Azure. And so here's this Excel front end. This is a, an idea which is pretty important that um, which we actually discussed in the when discussing cloud architectures, that effectively it's sort of the cloud bursting idea. You have your job, and let's suppose it's running on your laptop, and then the laptop decides this job's too big for me. You seamlessly jump off into the cloud, keep the same interface, but um, run the job on the cloud, not on your laptop. So this, when done correctly, is a very powerful idea. And here's, here's this done for Azure Blast. You can see there's a new button on Excel allowing us to, to choose a particular Blast service I want. Here's the European Bioinformatics uh, Institute that we saw before. Here's the Azure Blast database, and here's the uh, in NIH source. Here's a comment on um, um, personalized genomics. Um, and it's just the actual amount of data here is a little unclear because uh, when you um, measure uh, gene sequences, you actually generate a lot of sort of redundant data and exactly how many. Um, how much data it is, is possibly a little um, unclear. The, the, the suggestion here, the amount of real new data every day, if you measured everybody's genome every two years, is about 30 petabits per day. Uh, that is um, four petabytes per day. And if you actually looked at all the redundant data, that's a factor of 100 more. This data is uh, interestingly, is very distributed. Because we have all sorts of sources of data, our gene sequences are hundred thousand dollars or a moment, of, uh, or less at the moment, and they're getting cheaper. And just and there's this comment which you saw earlier about the difference in the, the fact that gene sequencing has gone down in cost um, quicker than cost of computing. Just taking all this data and running simple blast analyses, it's a little unclear exactly how much it takes, but it's. Um, up to um, a billion um, cores that might be needed. Here's 10, actually, the estimate is, is uh, 15 billion cores might be needed to, uh, to actually run BLAST on this data. So that's quite a lot. And we need to, um, I, I should say at the moment, this, whereas you know, we did LHC data analysis in this course, I would say that's a rather well understood data analysis problem. What's needed to be done is not understood here because we haven't exploited personalized genomics yet. So as we learn to do personalized genomics, we'll know a lot better how much computing is needed. At this stage here, you can just sort of guess based on uh, the simple possible things you might want to do. Here's an example of these are actually slightly old devices now. They're now smaller. And those devices will pour out data. These are these reads, which are a factor of 100. Uh, bigger than the, the uh, real data, and then those go through a whole pipeline and out pops whatever you want from your data mining. For our case, it's a result of clustering and other types of visualization. But 
that's just one example of many possible analyses. But this pipeline of machines, distributed machines, pouring data into a compute infrastructure which is connected to the Internet so it can deposit its analyze data on the Internet and analyze other data on the Internet for alignment information. That is what we're going to be needing to do. So this is this type, type of pipeline where you put different num programs into these blocks is extremely important. Faster is just a format which is commonly used for genomic or proteomic data. Here's an example of work we did um, with uh, a group from Seattle's Children's Hospital, in, in, well, of course, in Seattle. And it was to visualize a collection of proteins. And we, this uses something we've mentioned already, multidimensional scaling. It's a way of taking protein data and projecting it into three, into three dimensions. And the universe, the idea is you'll have a set of pr protein sequences. And using MDS, you will project all those sequences to three dimensions and you'll browse that sequence. So this is the Google Earth, Earth of genomics. And um, it uh, allows, uh, because we can use interpolation, it can actually be done quite efficiently. And this involves, this. Um, is an alternative, what's called multiple sequence analysis, that, which is a rather time consuming process. And it does not align lots of sequences together at the same time, but rather takes the sequences in pairs, calculates the mutual distance, and then uses that, those uh, pairwise distances to map the three dimensions.